Hi everyone, Kim Watson here today with a tutorial for Queen & Company. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a flower pot card. First of all, grab yourself some pattern paper. Uh, cut the strip 4 inches by 8.5 inches. Now we're going to score it. We're going to score first at 3.5 inches and the second part at 7 inches. We fold the card in half, this makes the pot and the, the, the smaller part will make the actual lip of the, of the flower pot. I'm going to grab a scalloped edge punch. If we just punch the edge with some sort of decorative punch, it just gives the, 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 the card um, a little interest and it just looks better. It looks so much better than a plain edge. Now that that's punched, what we're going to do is fold the pot. You'll notice that because it's a double-sided paper, once the lip of the pot is folded over, it gives you a different pattern, which is a lot more interesting than if it was all one design. Here you'll see I'm marking off the bottom of the pot, which we're going to trim away. It just gives the pot a more authentic shape. I marked it in half an inch. I'm going to grab my craft knife and craft mat and trim that excess paper away. So we trim the one side, trim the other side, Attempt not to draw blood. I do that all the time. Nick my fingers with the craft knife. It's trimming away some excess. I like it to be neat. There we go. Now the pot is almost done. We just remove that extra piece of paper and then we can fold it into the pot shape. Now we're going to cut the inside tag shape. It is 4.75 inches by 2.75 inches. You'll notice this fits exactly inside the little pot with enough room to slide in and out with ease. Now we're going to decorate it with flowers. I'm going to show you how to make a flower, a little loose flower shaker, even if you don't have enough of the supplies left over from your flower shaker kit left over. I'm going to take the die and trace that shape onto a piece of pattern paper and cut it out. This will act as the base of your shaker. Now we're going to remove the sticky backing. First of all, just push out the central foam part and push the pattern paper shape securely onto the, the sticky side of the foam. Now I'll take a piece of plastic packaging and a permanent marker like the one from Zig. Again, trace the shape of the flower out and cut it out. This is going to become the top acetate part of your shaker to hold the toppings in place. Grab some, some toppings. I chose the sweet little pearl colored um, uh, pearlies, the little mini pearlies. I chose a selection of pastel colors, the purple, yellow, pink, blue, I think. What you do is just fill that flower shape until you get a nice pretty mix of color. Shake it around to mix the colors up and then place your acetate topping on top. It is now completely secure. Grab your die cut, your die cut flower shape from pattern paper and using a liquid adhesive, attach that on top. Your shaker flower is now complete. As simple as that. Now that I have ready-made flowers, I'm going to start planning where I position them. You'll notice I used my sewing machine to secure the, car, uh, the actual pot shape so that no matter how many times you slide that tag in and out, it won't come undone. It is a great way of securing things that, that are a little that need to be a little more hard wearing. That flower shape came from the second flower that was included in the, the, the flower shaker kit. It's from the inside of the shaker and to make the flower shape a little more interesting I die cut some cardstock flowers, uh, layered them together with one of the little sparkler flower bling bits on top. Here we go, I've just taken in an iridescent flower shape. I pulled apart a palm flower, attached a single layer 
and then popped a little lollipop bling bit on top. I grabbed some baker's twine and some sparkle twine and placing them together tied them around the top of the pot just to give some interest and to make the card a little more special. Here we go, I'm just readjusting the loop shapes, the loop sizes so that they're the same size. The sparkle string gives the card such a special vibe together with the baker's twine. Lovely interest, makes it extra special. Now I'm going to start layering my flower arrangement. I started with a glitter flower topped with a lollipop, my lovely shaker flower, a die cut flower with a pom which I flattened slightly with my finger and then added a little yellow rivet on top of that, some die cut leaves add interest and make it look a little bit more realistic. The trick with these dimensional flowers is, or dimensional floral arrangements, is variety. Switch the flowers up, switch the colors up, change your toppings, be creative, add matte and shiny, vary your sizes of your flowers, that always helps immensely to make sure that your floral arrangement ends up looking as interesting as possible. Incidentally, these die cut flowers were cut with a die set bought from scrapbook.com scrapbook and they were from Little Bee. They're really, really great because they come in such tiny sizes, which is perfect for card making. Here what I'm doing is I'm layering the floral arrangement that is to go on the flower pot. You will notice that once the flowers are actually adhered to each part and you slip that tag inside the pot, the whole floral arrangement then looks like one item. I thought maybe it needed a little more lilac or lavender, so stuck a tiny little palm flower into the tag arrangement. See here we have the tag completed, we have the pot completed, it slips in the little slot there, and voila, we have a beautiful floral arrangement. Now I'm preparing a section on the tag so that I can add some journal lines. Just use a piece of, of over um, a cardstock that you have left over, mark it off, trim it down to whatever size fits your tag. Grab a stamp set and stamp some journal lines. I used one from Paige Evans for Pink Paisley and some Avery L ink, creating some nice pink journal lines. I used the, the other part of the stamp with the little circle, little circle designs to give each line a little bit of interest. I'm just adding some adhesive and I'm going to pop that on the tag. Ready for your sentiment, whatever the occasion, whichever the occasion might arise, whether it's birthday or a welcome, welcome home or just a friendship card, it can be absolutely anything. I chose a little label stamp which I punched and now I'm going to attach to the card with some fine white thread. Just slipping it underneath the yellow and sparkle twine and I'm going to tie a bow in a second. It creates a lovely little tied cluster on the left hand side of the card. You will notice that it just it balances out the heaviness of the flowers on the right hand side. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for joining me today. Be sure to stop by my channel for more tutorials next week. Thanks so much. Bye bye.